Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Sam Lebsock, pharmacist Michelle Moser, pharmacist Stephen Dixon. The question is about thoughts on LDN being covered by insurance. Um, I will say that I bet you can find a better price, a cash pay price um, versus insurance because it's a compound of medication and most insurance companies aren't contracted with compounding pharmacies. So you could probably find a cash pay price of between, you know, 60 to $80 for a three month supply. So that, that's what I would kind of say about that. Most insurance companies probably don't cover compounded medications. This is a patient who um, has Hashimoto's and is on levothyroxine and lymphoma. Uh, they're on LDN, but they still get quite bad highs and occasional angioedema on their lip. They're asking whether or not they should persist with LDN or any thoughts on those. And I think this is far too complicated a question to go into in, a, in this sort of forum. There's multiple things that we would have to talk about there. Is your Hashimoto's being properly monitored? What's the dose of thyroxine? Are you getting line of thyronine? Um, you know, what, are, what are you taking for the highs? Has it improved the LDN? There's so many things there that, um, that you need to. So I think you should maybe get in touch directly with the LDN Research Trust in writing so that one of us can come back to you in more detail later on. Can LDN worsen hyperthyroid? So um, a thyroid that is working um, overtime, so to speak, can LDN make that worse? Well, I think we need to get to, again, the underlying issue. And, and is this a situation where it's an autoimmune hyperthyroidism, such as Graves' disease? And I think Dr. Zielsdorf was very eloquent in describing what potentially could be some of the issues around hyperthyroidism that sometimes people kind of ebb and flow with their, their thyroid issue where they could be high and low. Now, what we do know is that if someone is on medication for thyroid replacement, then we, we need to take a look at thyroid markers, you know, what is going on with their labs after they've been on um, low dose naltrexone for a while. So anytime we have either a high functioning or a low functioning thyroid, I mean, that is the major metabolic pathway of the entire body. We always have to monitor and how quickly or how often we monitor. That is something that again, is very individualized. Yes, it has happened, but again, with, with good lab results, I think it can be very easily handled. And it's, I don't think it's necessarily a situation where you should stop your LDN. This is a patient asking about LDN in psoriasis. Um, so this patient wants to know about taking LDN orally for psoriasis, or they've also curious about LDN topically with um, psoriasis. And so in this situation, I would say if the psoriasis is all over your body, I think it's best to take orally. Um, there is some good research on taking LDN topically. I would say it does work best for like a pruritus situation if there's like an itch or something like that. But with psoriasis, I would probably suggest the oral formulation. I don't know if Stephen and Michelle want to chime in here about topically. I mean, you would just have to apply topically all over your body. And so I think it's probably easiest to take that orally and you'd get the better results. We're actually working with a consultant dermatologist in Scotland who's doing a kind of mini trial on this. Mm. Um, his latest results, I think, were something about 70% of patients taking oral LDN responded for, for um, urticaria and uh, chronic problems for antihistamines and mast cell stabilizers hadn't worked. Um, but he tried cream in some patients and really didn't get very much response in plaque psoriasis. Or, you know, so I think it's probably an absorption issue rather than mm -hmm. an efficacy issue. And specifically, this patient says about um, using uh, 4.5 already in Aquaphor, and that's an ointment base. 
which is going to be greasy, gooey, and it's going to change absorption. And I don't think you're going to get very good absorption there. And a lot of times when we're dealing with psoriatic plaques, you know, a lot of times they want to use an ointment base, but we have found that there's such, there's better bases that we can use specifically for, for a dermatological application, whether we're using it for urticaria or a lichen or, you know, specifically hives. It, I think it has everything to do with the base, but I completely agree. It's not a replace, topical is not a replacement of oral. Question is, um, what is the best filler to use if you have colitis? Also, will LDN eye drops help recurrent corneal erosion abrasion syndrome? So basically, my, our opinion would be anything that's not lactose, pretty much. Uh, I'm getting some nods from the other pharmacists, so just avoid the lactose for a filler. Um, pretty much anything else that we're going to use is going to be fine. Um, regarding LDN eye drops, um, that hits me quite hard because we can't get them in the UK and we can't manufacture them. So maybe someone else could answer that question for me. So, do, um, so Michelle or Sam, do you guys We, think we don't do eye drops either, but I there are is some good research using LDN yeah. eye drops, especially for a different type of eye pain. Um, th there is some good research out there at a really low um, dose. I don't know it off the top of my head. So I actually have personal experience of this because my own father, was having terrible trouble having had a cataract uh, taken out and he ended up with abrasion and exactly this, this erosion and abrasion around the site. And uh, we managed to get him onto some oral LDN. And um, while he didn't really tolerate the LDN very well everywhere else, his eyes were fixed within days. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amazing. Well, yeah, but he came off of the LDN after about six weeks and his eyes have never they've still remained fine so I mean, that's that's been quite good so i've been desperate to try and get LDN eye drops but the sterile facilities in the uk are almost impossible right um, to get them so sebastian dennison talked quite a bit in a mm -hmm. one of the extra uh parts or one of the extra presentations to the seminar this last june specifically on ldn eye drops and, and it's a very fascinating fascinating use of low dose naltrexone but again, it's a, a topical application that I, it doesn't replace oral. I think it's a great addition, but not necessarily, you know, it's not going to be a total replacement. Next question is LDN and depression. Oh, that's a big topic. And I will say we often hear that people who are using low dose naltrexone for other conditions, whether they're autoimmune or um, viral infection, often find that it actually helps with their depression and it helps with their anxiety. It helps not only lift their mood, but it also gives them energy, which is fabulous. And that doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen quite a bit. When in, in my professional experience with LDN and depression, we usually start at very small doses. So not necessarily low dose, but very low dose. And we might go down to 100 micrograms or even 50 micrograms and start moving up that way. The actual mechanism, I'm not really sure just, you know, decisively what that is, but we have had greater success using 0.1 milligram and slowly working up versus starting at 0.5 or even one milligram. So it's, um, it's an interesting concept, but we have seen it work very well. The next question is a patient who has GI issues, bad acid reflux, um, certain areas that are discomfort all the time. They also take probiotics. Um, so, and they also have, it sounds like some back pain. And so they're asking, can LDN help with gut inflammation? And the answer is yes. Um, it's been very successful in Crohn's patients, any type of GI. Depending on how severe, um, like Stephen was saying, you may need to do a sublingual um, tablet. Usually oral is fine um, with the absorption, but yes, it does help with gut inflammation. Um, it helps tight junctions. It's fabulous for that. So the next question is, um, are there any prescriptions that boost or inhibit with the human metabolism of LDN? And the answer to that really is not really. Um, basically, Pretty much most medications are suitable with LDN if you speak to your pharmacist and your prescriber correctly and work out how to do it with the, the obvious option of not taking strong opiates, painkillers uh, that are long acting. So there's not really usually too many barriers to taking LDN with a medication. 
Um, so but it is very much as a very wide question. We'll talk about that for several hours. But from a metabolism point of view, not really. There's not really anything else you could think that would cause a huge difference in the elimination. Next attendee would like to know: Are there any contraindications to low dose naltrexone? So there are some significant issues that we need to avoid, which could be classified as a contraindication. So we don't want to use opiates or synthetic opiates within, you know, four to six hours of low dose naltrexone because naltrexone is going to bind those same recite those same receptors and it's not going to work. So we also need to be very careful if we're using biologics. So if someone has the let's say psoriatic arthritis or if they have the need for a biologic and they were just recently started on biologics we've heard from other physician presenters at ldn conference and also in quite a bit of literature that we need to be careful about the timing of low-dose naltrexone but it does seem that if you're on low-dose naltrexone and then start a biologic that's a different reaction than if you're on a biologic and then start ldn so whether those are classified as true contraindications, I'm gonna defer because I don't see those as true contraindications, but at the same time, we just have to be sensitive to what's going on. So if someone is having a scheduled surgery, we usually ask them to stop their LDN 48 to 72 hours prior to their need for surgery. And then LDN can simply be picked back up if they're you know, soon after the surgery, as long as they're not using opiate or synthetic opiate like medications for pain control. I have a question here that has been sent in by a lady uh, who wasn't able to attend. I was just trying to read it. Um, she says, um, the question I had hoped to ask was about split dosing versus single dosing. It seems that there's so much information about advantages and disadvantages. What concerns me is the healing is important long term. And though the split high dosing I've settled on after much adjusting and experimenting is five milligrams in the morning and five milligrams at night. It's ex excellent for inflammation, pain and mood. I really wanted to know that it's good for healing long term. Should she be taking split dosing or um, single dose? Who would want to answer that one? I, I guess I would say it depends on the patient and what we're exactly treating. Um, for I see split dosing a lot of times more beneficial for more type of mood, um, anxiety, depression type of disorders. I see better results on daily dosing with autoimmune types of situations. Um, pain can also benefit from twice daily dosing, um, but more autoimmune, I see a once daily dosing. Um, but like I said, it kind of depends on the patient and what we're fully treating. Um, I do think it is important, especially in autoimmune, to have that release. It does bind to the receptors for six hours and you do kind of need that release. So sometimes with multiple times dosing, you don't get that um, release of the naltrexone from the receptors. But Michelle, Stephen, feel free to jump in there. Well, and I have to agree because with autoimmune, twice a day dosing, not as beneficial. Um, I have seen, and, and I believe um, Dr. Forster and Dr. Lannis talked about this um, at the 2019 conference, I think it was, mm -hmm. where they were actually using it for de significant depression up to three or four times a day. But again, those individuals were incredibly closely monitored and those were taken individual case by case situations. So this isn't general. Um, anytime that you dose more than twice a day, you're almost in a sustained reaction, right? So mm -hmm. you lose that intermittent blockade of the receptors, which is so important to how LDN actually works. So. Um, I, but I have seen uh, fibromyalgia, for example, is a very difficult disease state to treat. It doesn't matter what you're using, right? It's just very difficult to treat. And how quickly somebody responds is also very individual. So we have started using uh, twice a day dosing, but we're using a little dose, smaller dose on one end of the day and a little bit bigger at the other end of the day. And that's where our liquids tend to be very easy to use because it's simply just the measurement whereas you don't have to then mm -hmm. you know, have a 
huge stockpile of half milligram capsules and, and then wash it down with, you know, <laughs> ton of water. So again, very, very individualized twice a day dosing isn't for everybody, but when we're dealing with weight loss, right. Then we're usually in twice a day dosing mm -hmm. as well. Um, but where do we stop with the term low dose? So I, I can maybe add a little bit in there before we finish. Um, mm -hmm. So our, our experience was not really very similar to that because we had patients, there was a fad, oh, and I know, must be about 10, 10, 12 years ago, where one of the prescribing doctors uh, started moving people with Crohn's disease to twice daily dosing. Linda, you'll probably remember that as well. There was quite a lot of questions about it then. Yes. Um, has, so what we really have found now is that people who we would, we would have moved on to twice daily dosing as a trial, we moved them to sublingual dosing instead, and that seems to get the same result. Mm. Um, so I think before going to twice do daily dosing, I would go to sublingual dosing first. Just okay, time. thank you. So this one is talking about LD... Does LDN help with COVID vaccine related joint pains and inflammation? Also long, um, long COVID. So I think this is interesting. I, I think this is actually being studied at the University of Michigan, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think they have a COVID um, naltrexone study, LDN study going on. And I don't have the results of that because I, I know it's ongoing, but it makes sense um, with how LDN works that it will help with COVID long haul. So um, mechanistically, yes, I do think it makes sense. It will help with um, joint pains and inflammation because it decreases inflammation by blocking that toll-like receptor four and it stops all those excitatory cytokines. So yes, it makes sense that it will help with um, long COVID and even with any type of COVID-related vaccine issues. The next question is asking if there is any indication for LDN preventing or slowing the, prevent the progression of Parkinson's disease. So this is something which uh, we get this question probably every second or third day, and I'm always a bit disappointed answering it in that the standard answer we give is there is no evidence that it slows the progression of Parkinson's, but it certainly makes you feel better. Um, and that was backed up by a number of studies that have been done over the last few years. It improves mood, potentially improves the general feeling of well-being, but doesn't seem to do anything to the progression of the disease at this point. What is the lowest and the highest doses of LDN that have been used and found beneficial and for what uses? Oh boy, this could literally be, we could be here for days. Um, so in the interest of time, I will say that ultra low dose, which is um, a few micrograms has been studied. Uh, that was the oxytrol um, study. And that has been used to actually help people get off of their opiates and that in our pharmacy, we have had tremendous success with that. We had a lady who was on um, hydrocodone with acetaminophen for more than 15 years. And within 45 days, we had her, she was very motivated. Okay, so, so within 45 days, she was completely off. And with that, we found that she actually had some other issues. So then we slowly increased her dose from there. So I would say from just a couple of micrograms, one to five micrograms up to... Um, very low dose, which is usually around 50 to 100 micrograms, we can actually see for a wide variety of uses, including chronic inflammation and pain, even with a, a mood uh, variability there. If we're dealing with 0.5 milligram to 4.5 milligram, we will see those that used for the entire spectrum, right? So whether we're dealing with autoimmune, GI issues, Crohn's ulcerative colitis, um, a wide variety of other inflammatory situations. And then when we move above, let's say 4.5 milligram, and now we're dealing with 8, 16, 32 milligrams, now we're into the weight loss categories. So low dose naltrexone can be used for a lot of things. What I will say, and this has been brought up by many presenters at the LDN conferences, and it's we've also seen it in the research, is that when you start escalating the doses, you start losing some of the benefits associated with low dose because naltrexone is a very interesting molecule. Um, I've been a pharmacist for 35 years and this literally is the most fascinating product that I've, I've come across in all my time. LDN works very differently at low doses than it does at higher doses. It works 
mechanistically almost, well, I don't want to say opposite, but just very differently. And so we have to identify what we're going to be using it for. But again, because it's low dose, low side effect, um, you know, low, low drug interaction, low cost. It's like, why not use it? Can healthy people take LDN for maintenance? Well, this is an interesting question. I mean, I don't want to promote people to take LDN for no reason at all. Um, but I will say, like, I have patients who take it for like weight loss, like Michelle was saying, or seasonal depression that we have patients who do it seasonally. Um, so yes, I do think in certain situations it is, um, it is beneficial. Um, and I do have a patient who take it for anti-aging reasons, um, but necessarily as a maintenance drug, potentially, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> So, so, so many people ask us about LDN for aging. Um, unfortunately, we're bound in the UK that we cannot prescribe or dispense for a known condition. Right. So, um, you have to have a condition first. <laughs> so, um, yes, I think you would uh, phrase the questioning to your prescribing physician more correctly than I want it for aging is my general advice, if you want. Um, the next one is I'm 81 and I'm hormone replacement therapy and they have low thyroid function and they take 25 micrograms of levothyroxine. Am I a candidate for LDN? I'm very healthy. So I think my question would be, why do you want to take LDN? What's, what is suboptimal about your life? And that would be something to take, again, not for an open forum, um, but anybody who has hypothyroid potentially can benefit from, from LDN as we spoke about earlier on. So certainly the answer is probably yes, um, but again, it's, a, it's an offline. Right, Has anyone reported the use of LDN to either increase low blood neutrophil numbers or lower high blood lymphocyte numbers? I don't recall a specific study looking at either of those situations. Um, that doesn't mean I've read everything though. So I mean, I'm trying to remember anything in the Dartmouth study, you know, the, the compilation of the over 900 uh, papers that summarized all the wonderful uses of low dose naltrexone. I, I don't recall anything specific to this, although when we think about the mechanisms of how low dose naltrexone actually works on white blood cell changes, um, it could potentially help. I can jump uh, into the link to a paper please. if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a paper showing that in MS, um, in the long term, it maintains a healthy neutral count. So I'll try and put that into the group uh, conversation. That would be great. I'd love to see that. This next question is a two part question. Can you explain a bit, a bit more of the effects of LDN on the immune, immune system? How does it work? I also heard that it can help with sleep. I only started on LDN about two months ago and I am on it to help um, treat with chronic Lyme disease. Is there any good resources apart from the LDN Research Trust booklet um, that I already have to read more about LDN? So I'll start with that. Um, the LDN Research Trust also has the abstract of like every single paper that's ever been published on LDN, right, Linda? So that's a great place to start. Um, with, and you can find, go to their website and then you can even search indications and it'll pull up all these different abstracts on every, every paper they have on that indication. Also the LDN books are great resources. They have a chapter, they're right behind Michelle right there. Um, they have a chapter on all, each chapter is a different disease state. So they're, that's very helpful. And obviously any, most compounding pharmacies, Michelle, uh, Steve and myself, Linda, I'm sure gets tons of questions wrote into the LDN Research Trust. So we're always here to help. Um, as far as how does LDN work, um, LDN is a um, opioid receptor antagonist. So it blocks the mu receptors and that's, um, it helps increase endorphins by blocking those. And then it also is a toll-like receptor for antagonists. So that is that inflammation pathway that I was talking about. 
how it blocks those inflammatory cytokines. So two types of thing there, inflammation, and then um, the endorphins is what's thought to help boost the immune system by blocking that mu receptor. Stephen can probably go more into this because he is way more detailed into the pharmacology. He's, he wrote the chapter actually in the LTN book. So I'll leave it to him if he wants to add anything else there. Well, I, I think you've done a really good job of summarizing. And if you want to know more, you should buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> Available at many online stores. <laughs>